Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to give you my latest build for a budget gaming desktop PC that contains all of the components that you would need to upgrade your machine. It uh, does not have a monitor, does not have a keyboard, because in many cases you can just take those from the old machine. This is only for the components that actually matter um, for your system itself, um, plus a case, of course. With these series of components, which we'll talk about each one, it comes out to $638 at the base price, but I say that with a caveat because there is an alternative motherboard uh, which you can pick up if you happen to have Amazon Prime at the moment, which I'll show you right now. It's actually uh, the slightly downgraded version of this AS Rock motherboard, so let's pop over to that. The $50 version, um, the main difference here is that it only has two slots of RAM. But of course, since this is a budget PC build, the RAM slots that are being consumed are only two. So this prevents you from having the ability to upgrade later on into 32 gigabytes of RAM. But if budget is your key and you want to drop that down as close as possible to $600, then this version of the motherboard, which of course I'll link down below, rather than the mostly the same, but with two extra RAM slot motherboard, the ASRock AB350M, as you can see, it's $25 more if you want that ability to upgrade your RAM, then it might be worth it to go with that. And the base build is going to be using that because to get the $50 version of the motherboard, it does require Amazon Prime. But I kind of get the feeling a lot of people probably are using Amazon Prime already anyway. So uh, if you are, more power to you. It has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM running at 2400 megahertz clock speed. Note that it's DDR4, not DDR3. There are DDR3 variants of RAM that you can get from Corsair, but the problem is uh, we need DDR4 for this motherboard, so that's pretty important there. For the graphics card, um, rated as one of the highest bang for the buck cards out there at the moment, and of course because it's a gaming PC, graphics cards are very important. The GTX 150 Ti, and we'll talk more about it, but this is um, running at 4 gigabytes of video memory and uh, pretty high on the bench podcast, so I'll show you guys that later on. Now for the processor, and I did initially kind of jump into AMD because I am a bit of an AMD fanboy, but we'll also look at some of the data comparing to the latest i3 cores. Uh, the Ryzen 3 does actually outperform it by a little bit, but it's not as um, uncompetitive as you might think. Intel is pretty comparable to AMD these days, but the uh, Ryzen 3 is a good budget processor. You can jump up if you have extra money, um, to something that's more in the $200 range, but at this price point, it's probably about as good as you're gonna get. Uh, for the case, uh, I always think of the case itself as one of the areas you can kind of cheap out on a little bit. Um, many gaming PCs, especially the ones that have unlimited budgets, have all these flashy lights, but they're not really necessary. But what is important is that you have a solid power supply uh, to run your machine. You don't want that power supply to fry, you don't want that power supply to become malfunctional, and EVGA is highly rated in having good power supplies. Um, having it at 500 watts means there's going to be plenty of power for a machine like this, and you should be good to go there. And then lastly, a 1TB hard drive, nothing too special there. If I was to add on one extra feature to this package, I'd probably try to get a very small SSD drive purely for the operating system itself to run on, and then have all the storage still be uh, delegated to a giant standard hard drive like this. But for $50, one, gigabyte, uh, one terabyte of storage sorry, is pretty solid. So first up, I want to talk about the graphics card. That's probably the component most people are going to focus on the most. Um, taking a look at this comparison chart, you can see that the video card value, and this is at uh, videocardbenchmark.net by the way, um, the GTX 150 Ti in theory is being rated as only less in value to the GTX 960, but I actually checked Amazon and these 960s, which uh, based on this benchmark right here, are only slightly better than the GTX 150 Ti version. Um, they're actually like $200, whereas the GTX 150 Ti is $150. So I'm not, I'm not actually sure where they're getting that benchmark from, where this is supposedly high value. Maybe there's another site where you can get a better deal on that. But putting that aside, GTX 150 Ti obviously being really high up there and bang for the buck. And NVIDIA uh, cards have been really good for a long time, so 
that should be solid for you guys. Also showing up on this other site, bestpickers.com, um, that same card, the NVIDIA GTX 150 Ti, being listed in the best budget cards of 2017. Here you can see some alternatives, um, but a lot of these are going to be way higher in price. So at the $600 range, uh, GTX 150 Ti is probably about as good as it can So the next important component I had to think about was whether we should be going with an AMD core or an Intel core. Now, Intel does have the latest um, i well i3, i5, i7 cores, which are at 8100 and up now. And the i3-8100 actually does outperform the Ryzen 3 1300X. They're about the same price. Um, but the problem is that the 8th gen uh, processors require you to have a more expensive motherboard. So I wasn't really able to find a motherboard that supports i3 8100s or above for less than $100. So, and we can go ahead and uh, just change this here uh, to the i3 8100 to get like a kind of more fair comparison here. And you can see that theoretically you can get the i3 8100 for about $120. I saw it as $130 on Amazon, which is about the same price as Ryzen, and it does have a 9% boost in speed. Um, the problem is, once again, that all of the motherboards that would support that are in the $100 plus range. So you can see that really easily by doing a search for LGA 1151 8th gen, uh, and you can see $130, $275, $153. So when you're buying a low-end 8th generation core, you're still going to be paying quite a bit. Um, because it's 8th generation and there are only so many motherboards that actually support it and most of them are more expensive So it's actually not as good of a value proposition to go ahead and grab the i3-8100 right now And since the 7100 is outperformed by Ryzen 3 1300X Which can be coupled with a 75 or even a $50 motherboard as I previously explained I think Ryzen 3 is the way to go at the moment um, though it's worth mentioning, i3-8100, pretty solid. If the motherboards were cheaper, I would have gone with that instead. Now, these two motherboards I mentioned in this video, the AS Rocks, the 350 and the two, uh, 320, um, the difference between them is primarily that the 350 has four s slots for RAM. Um, they both use DDR4 RAM, so that's why we have to have uh, the time tack DDR4 up here, also DDR4. Now about the motherboards, I mentioned in this video, there's the 350M if you need four sticks of RAM, and if you have Amazon Prime and you only want two sticks of RAM and you want to get close to that, that $600 price point, the 320M um, would allow you to basically get the same stuff, just two RAM slots rather than four, so not as easily expandable. Um, but both of these motherboards support the Ryzen CPUs, and they run with DDR4 RAM. And they have a micro ATX form factor, which means that we would be building a tower that's kind of mid-range in terms of its size. To make all of those core components work, we would put it in the Rose Will tower case. Now, this is definitely a budget tower. It looks fine, it's got decent ratings, and it's micro ATX, which is what we need for the motherboard doesn't come with a power supply, which is probably a, a good thing. Um, generally, it's kind of recommended, especially for gaming PCs, that you kind of get a uh, trustworthy power supply, highly rated, to stick in there rather than using the stock power supplies. Though you could probably get away with a case that had a pre-built-in run-of-the-mill power supply. Um, so the idea here is that it's got enough space in order for us to pop in a couple of drives. So what's nice about this case, aside from the fact that it's got a very low price, is that it does come with two uh, fans out of the box, so you don't necessarily need to upgrade your cooling system. Um, so you got one fan there, and then the second one would go here in the rear, so pretty standard for computer cases. Um, now, uh, something I'm actually thinking about is that uh, there's no DVD drive actually in this package. So. If you want, you could grab your DVD drive from your old computer, but uh, honestly, my laptop doesn't even have a DVD drive, so when I install operating systems, I'm just burning uh, ISOs to a USB drive. Um, so you actually don't need a DVD drive really anymore. You can just uh, install Windows or Linux or whatever using USB if you know how. Uh, so worth mentioning that. And as for the power supply, just a really solid popular pick, the EVGA 500 watt power supply. Uh, more than enough power for the vast majority of systems out there. As you can see, 
hugely uh, trusted, tons of customer reviews, um, would be a solid pickup for that case. And finally, a Western Digital one terabyte hard drive. Um, it's running at 7200 RPMs. Nothing really too fancy to say about it. It's just a solid hard drive. A terabyte is quite a lot of space. If you install a lot of games, it should still be enough for you to basically play everything you want to play and not really have to uninstall anything in the long run. Though once again, if you are looking for speed and your boot up time and how fast your operating system runs, you could consider getting a small solid state drive in addition to this uh, to store your operating system on. Uh, but generally, I would still store most of your run-of-the-mill files, your videos, images, all that other kind of stuff that takes up space just on your regular old hard drive. So all of this combined, if you assemble it yourself, is going to come out to $638. If you, if you do as an alternative, grab the ASRock A320M motherboard, uh, which supports the same components as the other one I just previously mentioned, but only has two slots of RAM that'll save you another $25, which would knock the total price of this build down to $613.93, really close to that $600 price point. So if you're interested in checking this build out, I'm going to have a bunch of links down in the description, of course. This is the best I was able to come up with um, as of December 6th, 2017. Uh, basically spending a few hours on it, piecing together components from what I know. Comparing Intel to AMD and taking a look at what the best budget graphics cards are out there at the moment. So let me know what you think down below. Are you able to find an even better deal on a computer than what I came up with? Or is this basically where it's at? Once again, I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and I hope this video was helpful for you guys. So I will see you in my future video content.